بسم اللہ السلام علیکم ایوری ون وی آر گوئنگ ٹو بی کنٹینیوئنگ ود دی امپورٹنس آف ایتھیکل لیڈرشپ اینڈ وی لکڈ ایٹ دا ڈفرینٹ ڈیفینیشنز آف ایتھیکل لیڈرشپ اینڈ آلسو اٹس مین کمپوننٹس اینڈ ٹوڈے وی آر گوئنگ ٹو بی پروسیڈنگ اے لٹل وٹ اے ہیڈ اینڈ سی ہاؤ ایتھیکل لیڈرز بیسکلی ایزیوم ریسپانسبلٹی اینڈ آر ایبل ٹو اٹین اے اسپیشل پوزیشن ناؤ لیڈرز بیسکلی اٹین اے اسپیشل پوزیشن بائی کریٹنگ گریٹر اپرچونیٹیز to influence others and also the outcomes. The values of leaders influence the culture of an organization or a particular society. Now, when we are talking about values, then we are talking about what is important to the leader and then how does he synchronize and harmonize it with the organizational culture or the institutional culture and then makes his own values the values of the employees or of the different stakeholders of that particular organization. And that is very important because once those values are transcended to the other stakeholders, then true leadership emerges and more positive, impactful results can be achieved. And that is extremely important in ethical leadership. Leaders usually set the tone, they develop the vision, and their values and behaviors shape the behaviors of those following within their sphere of influence. Now, in the last session, I basically mentioned that the greatest leader of all is our great prophet, peace be upon him, Hazrat Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, because he was the very manifestation of truth, integrity, and honesty, and also a role model of being sadiq and amin, and then of hard work, of humility, of resilience, of of influence, and all the other values that one can think of. Uh, coming a little bit ahead and looking at it in the context of modern leaders, then we have uh, Nelson Mandela. We have Muhammad Ali Jinnah, we have Mahatma Gandhi, we have Abdul Sattar Eidi, and all of them have basically exhibited different forms of ethical leadership and proven through their actions that words, that words don't matter. It is the actions which actually create the influence and inspire others to follow them. Uh, another uh, dimension is that greater the power, the more responsibility a leader has. So this is also extremely important that as the level of power tends to increase or the level of influence tends to increase or the authority of the leader tends to increase, then uh, it is uh, directly proportional with responsibility. So the responsibility of a leader also tends to increase. Contemporary practice and literature is shifting the focus away from traditional leadership styles. So because of the 21st century, because of the advent of technology, because of so much instrumentization and panelization, then we see that uh, the whole paradigm has shifted from uh, traditional leadership towards ethical leadership and transformational leadership. Two models can be used to explain the relationship between ethical leadership and effective leadership, the interpersonal trust model and the social power. When we look at the interpersonal trust model, it is based upon five components. First of all, and most importantly, integrity. Secondly, competence. Thirdly, consistency. Fourthly, loyalty. And fifthly, openness. So these five elements are extremely important and we have to have integrity, we have to have a certain level of competency and it should be consistent. There will be ups and downs, there will be failures and successes. One has to be consistent and also loyal with the institution and the institution on the other hand should have a strong level of openness whereby there is an open channel of communication between different employees and the top management and the board of directors so that everyone can get together and make a difference, a positive difference. And that is what uh, interpersonal trust is all about. When we look at the social power model, which was developed by French and Raven in 1959, then we see five common and important bases of power. The first one is legitimate. The second one is coercive. The third one is reward-based. The fourth is highly competent expert. And the fifth one is reference. So again, these are five different bases of power. In the context of moving forward in ethical leadership, it can be legitimate that it can be through uh, a, a, a election process, a selection process, and all of that would be meritorious and open-ended and, and also uh, privy uh, to uh, scrutiny. And uh, this legitimacy would come through uh, a democratic approach of uh, leadership. So that is extremely important. Then it can be coercive. It could be maybe... Uh, martial law or it could be some other country influencing like right now we have uh, Russia invading 
uh, Ukraine, and again, that is coercive, uh, it can be reward based that uh, if the person has done something good, uh, an appropriate reward uh, can be given uh, to that particular follower or that particular employee, depending upon the situation, depending upon the resources, and depending upon the impact which is achieved uh, by that particular employee. Then, uh, expert, and that basically means that there has to be uh, a certain level of competency. And in referent again, uh, what we see is that uh, it can be uh, out of respect. Uh, compliance uh, means that people follow the directions of the person with power. Resistance means that employees will deliberately try to avoid carrying out instructions. And commitment definitely is uh, that when people adopt the leader's uh, viewpoint and enthusiastically carry out the instructions. So these are uh, the different uh, formats of leadership. Uh, we also know that in Pakistan, uh, more than 64% of uh, the population uh, comes from the youth bulge and we see that there are many new challenges emerging and also uh, the fact that uh, despite people think that we are going to have a scarcity, I personally believe that uh, there would be a great deal of potential uh, for growth in the coming years. Uh, but we have to be patient, we have to be ethical and we have to ensure uh, that no one group or uh, team of individuals tends to use uh, the rights uh, of the nation. And in that whole context, there has to be a leth ethical leadership model uh, to be implemented by everyone. A lack of pro poor policies and limited economic growth has led to pervasive mistrust in governance in Pakistan. We see that since 1957, uh, things have been moving one way or the other, but always tend to push a special group ahead. And therefore, now the distance between uh, both the ends uh, has greatly exponentially uh, expanded. Uh, in Pakistan, uh, we are a developing country where around 64% uh, is below 30 years of age and therefore we have to utilize this use bulge uh, not as a problem but actually as uh, an asset, uh, as a knowledge based uh, individual and uh, someone who can be creatively engaged to make the world a better place. So what we see is, is that the ethical uh, leadership model uh, is very much focused toward positivity, constructivism and uh, the collective good. So that's very important and it's going to be practiced uh, extensively uh, in the uh, private sector and also in the public or social sectors. Thank you so much.